uh, taking place on the world stage, what is grabbing the attention of humanity, mm -hmm. and how they are running with it, and perhaps running towards a precipice. And it looks like a good um, goal that it might be running towards. Absolutely, but, but it's a precipice. Mm. Okay, so what's new? I mean, it, some of it's not new anymore, mm. but nevertheless it's still worth talking about. The New York Times told us this month that a clock has been uh, put in place that used to be just a normal clock, which was also a little bit of a strange clock, apparently. But this one tells us how much time there is remaining. And I, and I just thought it would be interesting because we had a lecture. Uh, I'm almost scared to go there. <laughs> I think its number was number eight, yes. to which was added number nine where we mentioned a date. Mm. Of course, we didn't mention that date in terms of the end, but just a deduction from the spirit of prophecy. And the year that we mentioned was 2027. Mm. And it caused quite a, quite a little bit of excitement in the world. Now, this clock is what some people call a doomsday clock. And it tells you the number of years and the number of days and the number of hours and the number of minutes that are left before we run out of time in terms of climate change. Mm -hmm. We're not saying it's the end of the world, yeah. but uh, in terms of climate change, that's the deadline. Now, these guys are brilliant. They've got it down to the minute. <laughs> Even the second. <laughs> I think some people should write articles against this. I mean, this is time setting like, like you cannot believe, right? <laughs> anyway, so what happens? For more than 20 years, metronome, which includes a 62 foot wide 15 digit electronic clock that faces Union Square in Manhattan, has been one of the city's most prominent and baffling public art projects. So it displayed at the time, and some people in the past thought, you know, there were other issues that were hidden yeah. in that. But nevertheless, let's read the highlighted part. On Saturday, Metronome adopted a new ecologically sensitive mission. Now, instead of measuring 24-hour cycles, it is measuring what two artists, Gan Golan and Andrew Boyd, present as a critical window for action to prevent the effects of global warming from becoming irreversible. Well, I'm glad we've got it down to the minute. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> On Saturday, 3.20 p.m., messages including the Earth has a deadline began to appear on the display. Then the numbers 7, 103, 15, 40, 07 showed up, representing years, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Oh, I stand corrected. Down to the second. We definitely need an article against this form of time setting, don't you think? <laughs> yes. This is arguably the most important number in the world, Mr. Boyd said. And a monument is often how a society shows what's important, what it elevates, what is at the center stage. So they described this project and they created a web page called climateclock.world. Well, so 2027, in the 103rd day from when it was erected, the 15th hour and the 12th minute and then the seconds, then they say that's the deadline for irreversible climate change. I'm, I'm always amazed how accurate people can be. Hmm? Now, what do they actually have to say about this issue? Let's have a look at uh, a little discussion that they had with the artists. And what a climate clock shows is a string of numbers. And those numbers are really important, arguably the most important numbers in the world right, and what, now. right now. And what they are saying uh, right at this moment is that we have seven years and 101 days to take action on climate change to prevent the effects of climate catastrophe from becoming irreversible. 
you know, the media loves to be sensationalist and say, this is a doomsday clock. Like, you know, it's counting down and in seven years, the world is going to explode. That's not what the clock shows, right? It is showing our time window for action. This is yeah. the best period of time that we have to really make a difference. Um, and the world will go to hell later. This number has been around for a while. This is, we didn't make up this number. This is number has been scientifically accepted for years. The problem is that people not, are not paying attention to it. So we realized that we had to turn it into a monument, literally, in public space to give it the kind of monumental importance it deserves. We're encouraging other cities to start to install their own monumental clocks. But, like, what can, you know, what can high school students do? What can we do, you know, to spread the word more? So what we've done is we've actually built a smaller version of the clock that you can make yourself. You can order the parts. And you can have one, a high school classroom could do it. Um, and it's something that, you know, you can learn about climate, you can build your own clock, but then you have this messaging tool to tell other people what's up. And, and again, it's to get all of us on the same timeline. It's like, this is mission impossible or nearly impossible, but we can do it, but we need to synchronize our watches, right? That's the key thing. All get on the same page. Please. And also, isn't this, uh, this is kicking off Climate Week, is it not? There's, there's like a series of uh, events and, and marches and things that are kind of culminating in this next uh, week to 10 days. Is that right? It's a, it's a, we, we launched the clock at the very opening of Climate Week. And um, it's, a, it's a whole week of, of many events and seminars and educational sessions. Unfortunately, this year, because of COVID, it's largely virtual, so no marches. I think on Friday, you know, in as part of the Fridays for Future mm -hmm, movement mm -hmm. that Greta Thunberg started, where millions of young people are recognizing that as older people are failing them and they're taking matters into their own hands, they're going to be, I think, in there's 2,500 different youth-led events that are who, happening who on you, Friday. Who are you calling <laughs> old? And all those young people who are out on the streets to be able to point to it. And yeah. every time yeah. they get pushback from politicians or oil executives who are saying, oh, it's too fast. We can't do it. You know, it's too expensive. They can keep pointing to that clock and say, you can't argue with that. You right. can't tell me that my future is less than whatever it is that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So we're providing a tool for all of the good people who are doing the hard work to strengthen what they're doing. Right. We like to think of it as we're not just creating a monument. We're helping to create a movement. Now that was a little bit more detailed mm, of where it comes from and why. So who's dictating the clock? The scientists. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that the religious world can latch on to the scientific opinion and say that something of a religious nature must be implemented because science demands it? Mm, definitely. So has science become a god? Oh, def um, look at the lockdowns. That's it's based on science. Based on science. I find it interesting that there are now all these visionaries in the world that have, are having dreams. And there's a little four-year-old girl in the Philippines who had a dream. Mm -hmm. And she dreamt that uh, they were coming after them with the vaccines. And she dreamt of Dr. Fauci and uh, Bill Gates coming and that Fortunately, all Christians were raptured just before it happened. But all those that were behind, it was total disaster. But be that as it may, science is in the mix mm. and descriptive. Another issue is all of us have to be on the same page. That's another important yeah. point. In other words, for the sake of the common good, everybody must think the same. The same. Like he said, our watches should be synchronized. Our watches must be synchronized. And the youth must be used mm -hmm. to push the issue, just like the Pope used uh, Greta. Yeah, and he, they spoke about Greta. Yes. And from what I've also read, they actually gave one of those model clocks that they made to Greta. Uh -huh. And that Greta movement, for people that, have don't are not up to date with it, like they mentioned, two and a half thousand places around the world that were getting together again for this movement. For it's this not movement. that movement didn't disappear no, even no. all of the sudden. So there is a deadline. They have a year, sometime in two thousand and twenty seven, this action must be in place. In other words, what do they want in place? Because they said 
the politicians must be influenced mm. and must be forced to bring about legislation to change the issue. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Does the Pope support th their view? Absolutely. Mm. He wrote an encyclical on it. Absolutely. And I'm very interested to hear what he's going to say in the next few days mm -hmm. when his new encyclical comes out. But we'll talk about but that. So bottom line from this little video, they have a timeline. I'm not saying they're saying this is the end of the world, but they have a timeline when they want legislation in place based on scientific data that brings the whole of humanity onto the same page for the common good. And I'm wondering what legislation will that be and will it have a religious sting to it? Yeah. That's the bottom line. Definitely. Good, let's move on. Now... Here is the Japan Times from the 23rd of September and it is talking about avoiding a climate lockdown. So we've had a practice run with a COVID lockdown. Mm. Now they're saying if we don't shape up, then there will be a climate lockdown. Yeah. So was that a practice run? Well, you remember how many articles came out about how clean the air is in China, the, in Venice, the, the canals were clean. So they've pushed this, and even the, the Pope, he said this was nature having a fit. So and I, I was wondering how, with after the very first few days of lockdown, how the rivers got so clean so quickly. It's amazing, right? Yeah. No, sure, it went in, everything stopped, everything stopped. I get so many notifications of people that think that the scientific fraternity is the one that one should listen to in terms of all the aspects. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wondering, do these people also think the scientific fraternity should be listened to when it comes to the philosophy of evolution? Yeah, is there, I'm not, I'm not knocking science, I'm, I'm a scientist myself, mm. There's nothing wrong with science, but the philosophy that runs science, yes. that is where the problem lies. And if you can use science to push a philosophical agenda, then we are on very dangerous ground. Then it's not the religious world asking for this. Mm -hmm. It's the scientific world. This God called science is saying, mm -hmm. you better shape up or ship out, right? So I find this one very fascinating. As COVID-19 spread earlier this year, governments introduced lockdowns in order to prevent a public health emergency from spinning out of control. In the near future, the world may need to resort to lockdowns again, this time to tackle the climate emergency. Now, if this was a practice run, the sting will probably be in this one, right? Shifting Arctic ice, raging wildfires in the western United States and elsewhere, methane leaks in the North Sea are all warning signs that we are approaching a tipping point on climate change when protecting the future of civilization will require dramatic intervention. We have a clock. Yes, now we've got clock. It's set for 2027. Mm -hmm. I can't help find that <laughs> finding that interesting. Under a so-called climate lockdown, governments would limit private vehicle use, ban consumption of red meat. That is more than fascinating. And impose extreme energy saving measures while fossil fuel companies would have to stop drilling. To avoid such a scenario, the world must overhaul its economic structures and do capitalism differently. Then the window for launching a climate revolution and achieving an inclusive recovery from COVID-19 in the process is rapidly closing. So they have an agenda and they are pushing it every fiber of humanity's being 
is geared to move in this direction. And the timeline, mm -hmm. the timeline. Now, we just need to bring religion into the mix, and then we have prophecy fulfilling before our very eyes. In a way that we might not have expected it, but yeah. nevertheless, coming that way. Mm -hmm. Here's the religious news service, also from September 2020. Pope Francis launches his post-COVID agenda with announcement of a new encyclical. So there's a lot of speculation, mm -hmm. a lot of expectation as to what is he going to say. Exactly. With the announcements of a new document coming this fall, Pope Francis is launching his agenda for a world after the pandemic, one in which nations and individuals will rethink economic models and create a more just system. Isn't that what we just read in the previous article? Mm -hmm. But you know what? There's something that's fascinating to me. This picture, a picture speaks a thousand words, right? Yeah. Everybody is wearing masks on that side of the fence. It doesn't seem as if anybody's wearing a mask on this side of the fence. Mm. So I'm wondering whether this barrier over here is COVID proof. <laughs> it must be. It can't cross that barrier, right? It's just interesting that one who is so interested in having all humanity obey all the rules and follow the guidelines is so blatantly ignoring them over here. Nevertheless, let's continue. Vatican spokesman Matteo Bruni confirmed rumors on Saturday, September 5th, of the release of a new encyclical by Pope Francis on human fraternity. The title, Brothers All. This is very ecumenical. Mm -hmm is inspired by the words of St. Francis of Assisi. The Pope will sign his third encyclical at the tomb of St. Francis in Assisi on October 3rd, the day before the feast day of the famous friar. They always have to have special days, special circumstances. Yeah. Jubilees and feasts. That will, that will make it prominent, right? Mm -hmm. And he proposed the plan to resurrect after coronavirus lockdown. The plan is anchored on the global interconnectedness that became so apparent during the pandemic. In another speech on September 1, Pope Francis addressed faithful on the World Day of Prayer for the care of creation. And what was the memorial of, to creation again? The Sabbath. The Sabbath. Mm. Stating that the pandemic has brought us to a crossroads. So the bottom line is we had the secular world saying there's a window of time, we have to act. And here we have the religious world already planning the post-pandemic mm -hmm. agenda. Yeah. Peru's prime minister supervises compliance with nationwide Sunday curfew. So we said Sunday will be in the mix, right? Mm -hmm. So the Peruvian Prime Minister, Walter Martos, flies over various parts of the capital city, Lima, to verify the compliance with the mandatory social immobilization measure decreed by the government to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now, did he fly on a Monday? No. He flew on a? Sunday. To make sure that they comply to there's the immobilization measures. Yes, so um, there's, there was a Sunday curfew and flying around. This is just f interesting to me that this might be a precursor of what we can expect. It, it seems to me almost like they're writing a Talmud of how far you may walk on a Sabbath day, right? Immobilization tells me you're not allowed to walk at all. At all. Yeah. This is the first Sunday under the curfew after the quarantine was lifted in most regions across the country last July. It must be noted that during the mandatory social immobilization, strictly necessary personnel 
who participate in the provision of food supply, health, financial and restaurant services for home delivery will be exempted from the restrictions to transit freely. The measures will be in force all day long until 4 a.m. on Monday. Last Wednesday, President Martin Viscara announced the return of the mandatory social immobilization curfew on Sundays due to a rebound in a COVID-19 infection in Peru. What do you say about that, Martin? I don't know. It's just interesting that it... How does it work? They just single out Sundays every time. Every time. Every time. So it's in the mix. Yeah, like you said in the previous or, uh, episode... It's interesting that the virus is very active on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has to be curtailed. Now, this is a prophetic scenario. Yeah. This is an unfolding of prophecy. And uh, if you don't see it, well, then you're not reading the news. You're not reading the news. Now, this one is, is actually quite fascinating. Mm. It's actually more than fascinating. It is shocking. horrendous, yeah. shocking. I don't want to say frightening. I don't want to use that word. No. Because frightening means that you do not understand the prophetic scenario. Mm. It's going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. So if it's going to happen, perfect faith drives out fear. Yeah. I'm not going to use the word frightening, no. but shocking mm -hmm. is fair enough. So this was from the 22nd of September. Daniel Andrews demands extraordinary new law to let Victorians arrest each other. As top judges warn of abuse and critics say he's creating his own version of the East German secret police. Allow any person the government considered appropriate to be authorized to exercise emergency power, including make arrests. There would be no requirement for them to be police officers or even public servants. So this is a new law that is in being introduced. He's, yeah, he's pushing for this, this Daniel Andrews. And the Bible says that this is going to happen. Mm. Where the Bible tells us that families will be arrayed against each other, family members, that there will be betrayals, mm -hmm. and those that even kill you will think that they are doing, doing God, a, God service. a service. Mm. And we understand from the spirit of prophecy that at the end, the populace will be given permission mm -hmm. to even kill. Now, are there any precedents of this nature? And we've mentioned them before on WhatsApp. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. When Martin Luther stood under the ban of the church and the state, he was declared to be free range, yeah. free, game. free game. And on a certain time and a certain date, anybody was allowed to arrest him mm -hmm. or get rid of him. Yes. And we are heading in the same direction. Yep. Now, I remember a few years ago, I was lecturing somewhere, I can't even remember where, and I was talking about these issues and how it will be that we'll get to this stage mm -hmm. where people will be given permission mm -hmm. to arrest or even go further to execute someone. And people said, that will never happen, never. Now look at this. Not only that, if you look at the news headlines mm -hmm. today, I mean, how many cases have we now read about where a person walks into, let's say, a store mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a mask, yes. and the security guard, who's not a policeman, shoots him mm -hmm. because he doesn't have a mask on. Did, there's also be um, some videos during the rounds of how people are getting treated. Exactly if they don't wear a mask or... And not only by the authorities. No, no, by... By members of the yes, public. Yes, public. And do you remember in um, that Trump, they gave incentives to people that were um, 
giving information on if they saw people not adhering to the COVID rules. Uh -huh. Now, that's exactly how it was, and this person is perfectly right. This is exactly what it was like. They're saying East Germany. Mm. That was like that. In many, many countries where the populace becomes the spy of the mm. neighbor. It was like that in Nazi Germany, and exactly. it's like that at the moment because there have been incentives that have been created with if you tell about your neighbor who is not complying according to your mm -hmm. view to these regulations, then you should hand him over. So we are heading to a 